Hey, Fellowship, just making a video for you here in the mountains. It's just, you know, every, like the, the, the camera can't possibly capture <laughs> the beauty of this place, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what it's like living out here and just being in this beautiful autumn day. And we're learning about Yaakov Avinu, Jacob, our father, is out in the mountains with his sheep doing business. And the last few weeks we've gone kind of through a deeper understanding of the story of the patriarchs. We learned that Avraham is chesed, representing loving kindness. Yitzchak was gevura, representing restraint, representing control, discipline. Yaakov Avinu represents the final ingredient that was needed in order to birth the nation of Israel. And Abraham, he not only represented chesed, but he also represented the positive mitzvot, the positive commandments. Yitzchak, in his restraint, represented withholding, not doing the averot, not doing the sins. So we have one that's outward, action, going to do the positive, seeing the orphan, seeing the widow, seeing someone in need, seeing the darkness and bringing the light. Yitzchak, on the other hand, saw the darkness and made sure to not allow it to come in. Yaakov Avinu, Jacob, our father, something totally different. Also, in the stories of Jacob, we get really deep into his insides of the business that he was running. We don't really hear about that. We hear that Abraham was sometimes poor, and sometimes he was quite wealthy, and Yitzchak, we hear that he plants some wheat and was very successful in reaping his crops. Jacob, I mean, we hear how many years he's working, his strategy for getting the sheep. I mean, we're entering into this whole world of the inner workings of his business and how he became so successful. How he crossed the Jordan with just a stick in his hand and came back to the land of Israel. Quite a wealthy man, so wealthy that he was able to divide his camp up into two camps. He walked to outside of Israel with a stick and he came back with so much, he was able to divide his property into two full camps. And we learn how that happened. And so what does Yaakov represent? Yaakov represents an area of life which is actually most of our lives, which aren't necessarily about positive commandments or negative commandments, mitzvot and averot, just about living life, running a business, raising a family, um, how we deal with our neighbors, how we deal with our business associates, how we deal with our employees, how we deal with our students, how we deal with our teachers. It's just life. It's that whole area of just mutar. It's just what you're allowed to do. Just the world. Now you could act in a good way and a bad way, but there's not really a rule book saying this is a positive commandment, this is a negative commandment. It's just how we interact with the world. And Jacob is the one, the third father, that brings in the final piece to the puzzle that teaches us how to be in the world. And the attribute and the virtue that Yaakov represents in this soul map, if we have love and compassion and giving on one side with Abraham, and then we have restraint, discipline, persistence on the other side with Yitzchak, Yaakov represents the attribute and the virtue of truth. Emet. Ten emetli Akov, God gave truth to Jacob. But when you look at the stories of Jacob, out of all of the patriarchs, he was the most controversial when it came to being honest. He sort of manipulated Esau when he came in from the field, sold him a bowl of soup that for something a lot more valuable. He tricked Jacob. I uh, tricked Yitzchak when he walked in to his thing, dressing up like Esau. I mean, just blatant lies. He also pulled a fast one on Lavan, his father, his father-in-law. I mean, out of all of the avot, of all of the patriarchs, for him to represent truth is really, really peculiar. But I think that's the lesson that's being taught to us, is that in the world that isn't very defined, that isn't, yes, it's a positive commandment to do this, it's a negative commandment to do that, there's just room to live. Where are you supposed to live? Should you live in the city? Should you live on a farm? There's no rule book. What do you follow? So Jacob teaches us that as believers in the God of Israel, named after Jacob, the God of Israel, God speaks to us, guides us, protects us, and walks with us. And he will give us a truth that only we know. 
From the outside, the whole world looks at Jacob and says, man, that guy was a liar. He tricked his father, he tricked his brother, he lied to everyone. But on the inside, Jacob represented an inner truth, an inner integrity that was unshakable. Even if it meant that he had to lie on the outside, he was being true to the voice on the inside. And only in dealing in the world of mutar, in the world where there isn't specific commands, you're just allowed to. It's just the world in which we live, the most important ingredient is your inner truth, is the inner truth that God puts on your heart. Now, everyone knows we have this voice, we have this conscience, we have this yetzer hatov that's there that guides us. And when we violate our inner truth, we know it. And let me tell you, if you continuously violate that inner voice that's calling you to the good, eventually reality will snap back on you. You can only manipulate reality so long until reality comes back because reality, havaya, existence is the ultimate truth. And Jacob says to be in line with the ultimate truth, to be in line with God, you have to be in line with yourself in that inner calling of truth. And that's why Jacob represents truth for all of us. Now the Nitivot Shalom says something beautiful. He said, what was that story where Jacob comes to this rock and pulls it off of a well and somehow brings the water out that usually took a whole community of shepherds to come to do? Why was that story important for us? So that story was important to teach us one thing, at least. And that was, when we're dealing in the world and we have the media telling us what truth is, we have politicians telling us what truth is. We have false doctrines telling us what truth is. We have religious traditions that are telling us what truth is. You know, the only way to bring out the water, to bring out the Torah, to bring out the holiness, we have to remove the rock. You need a community. You cannot do it alone. Jacob was the only one that was able to remove the rock to reveal the water, the living waters of God. But us that aren't exactly Jacob, look how lucky we are. We have a fellowship. We have a community of people that each one is following their own truth, even though on the outside it looks like we contradict each other. It looks like we don't come from the same place. I'm here from the mountains of Judea, but we know there's people from New Zealand, from Africa, from this religion, from that background, from this education. But all of us are following an inner truth that has somehow brought us all the way to the land of Israel. And that is connecting us to the God of Israel. And so we should all be blessed to follow truth. And hopefully next week, we're going to delve into that just a little bit more. The final patriarch of Israel that brought the last virtue, the last attribute, that is the foundation, the core of everything, to be true to others, to be true to yourself. And so we should all be blessed to walk in the ways of Israel. Shalom. Hi, my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. There are live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the Land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the Land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds, and nationalities, it feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets, unfiltered and uncentered directly from the Land of Israel. We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Callan Ardell, USA. Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feasts, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel to help us navigate through these turbulent times.
These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each, and truly, each session is the best one yet. Tehila is a tremendous asset, and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times, and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for centuries. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship. Myself, Rabbi Arya Bramowitz in Tehillah Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24-6 via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.